This is episode three of the Expert's Guide to Empires and Puzzles, and this is Nittany Lion Roar. Today we're going to talk about emblems, uh, so I'm going to talk about what they are, uh, who to focus on putting them on, uh, and what it does, what class talents are, and, and which pathways you should choose within those uh, classes. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to show you is first, after you completely max a hero, you can start putting emblems on them. And you can see that I already have some heroes with emblems on them, I'm up to level 8 on Gravemaker. So that's there in the bottom middle right-hand corner. You can see that there's 8 on him. Uh, I have 2 on this Quintus. Um, I have 9 on Sashat. Uh, so I've been working hard on my heroes. Uh, when you go to one of your maxed heroes, like let's say that I go to Alacy and click on Talent Grid, uh, I can see that I have pathways here, and if I have enough emblems, I can click on that and learn a talent. And each of the heroes have their own class talent. So there's uh, 10 classes, and um, each of the heroes uh, fall into one of those. Um, so just some examples are like Gravemaker is a barbarian, and uh, Anzo is a wizard. Um, let's see, Wilbur is a monk, uh, and so on and so on. And there's lots of resources on the internet and on the forums where you can find all of these class talents uh, and what they are um, and what the special abilities are. So I'm not going to go through all of those today because that would make for a really long video. Uh, but um, let me just tell you about two of the best class talents you kind of want to look out for. Uh, the first is Fighter. So the some of the good heroes that have the fighter class talent are um, Delilah and I have emblems on one of my fighters Missandra and the reason fighter is good is because if we read what the skill is at the bottom I clicked on talents it says revive so right now at level 8 Missandra has a plus 18 percent chance to revive with one HP after a fatal attack the revive is applied at the end of turn uh, and this is super useful, especially with a hero like Delilah. Like, I wish I could spread my emblems around, which I don't recommend doing, but um, <laughs> Delilah can be a big pain, especially on defense. Uh, I've definitely played against her where she was, like, impossible to kill, um, where I had killed her once, she stayed alive. I killed her a second time, she stayed alive. Then her special goes off, and now she's healed, and now I have to try to kill her again. And, you know, even when you kill her then, then she still has a chance to stay alive. So uh, it gets really difficult. And the more emblems that you put on heroes, the, the more annoying a skill like that gets. All right, and then the second really good uh, class talent is uh, the rogue talent. So for a while, I had emblems on Demidia, but I since switched it since I got um, Sashat, and she's just strictly better than Demidia. But... Um, uh, Demidia is a rogue, and then I have also put, and I think this is important, if you can, um, if you don't have anything better to do with your rogue emblems, put them on Guardian Jackal, uh, since he's uh, the only yellow defense elemental to buffer right now. But anyway, the rogue class talent is a 20% chance to dodge direct damage from an offensive special skill. So this really helps in keeping Guardian Jackal alive whenever you're attacking because his defense and uh, hit points are pretty low. So he needs everything he can to stay alive. That's why I've put all these emblems on my Guardian Jackal. But if you have a good 5-star hero for your defense, like I used to have Demidia on my defense, uh, this is an incredible ability on defense too. Um, in fact, probably one of the best heroes uh, for this is um, Alice, because there are very few really good rogues, and she's one of the few. So if you have Alice, I would recommend putting emblems on her and sticking her in the corner of your defense. Um, all right. So uh, I just want to point out that these five-star heroes that I've been putting emblems on, they take three times as many emblems to get to max, and the max level is 20, as compared to a four-star. Uh, the max is also 20, no matter whether it's like a legendary hero or a rare hero or an epic hero. Um, actually, yeah, let's see. I think the rare heroes, the emblems are a little bit different. I'm not going to focus on them too much today. I'm mostly going to focus on legendary and epic, but... Um, but they get up to level 20, 
It's just that the legendary heroes take a lot of emblems. So if you don't have a really good uh, five-star hero to put emblems on, it's okay to put them on the four-star heroes because it essentially turns them into a five-star hero. Let me give you an example. Um, I have uh, Sabina here. And if you look at her stats, those are five-star stats. Like a max five-star without emblems. That's pretty much what Sabina is here. And whenever you look at Guardian Jackal, that's the same thing. Like look at that 802 attack. That's incredible. Um, and I've even gotten Guardian Jackal's defense up pretty close to what like Quintus's would be uh, without any emblems on it. All right, so there's there's two kinds of focus focuses foci <laughs> whenever you're uh, embleming them. If you're a, a late game but free to play or cheap to play, or you don't have that many good options at five star, um, definitely emblem your four star heroes to give yourself a lot of depth. If you pick like five five star heroes for your defense uh to put emblems on if you have that and then go emblem you can emblem then like 15 like 10 to 15 other four stars and basically have just a really deep strong bench for wars um you can even if you're sort of mid late game and you really don't expect to be spending money or getting a lot of heroes you can even put some emblems on some select three stars to turn them into four stars basically uh, you know, for the purpose of this series being expert videos, I don't really recommend that, but you could. Now, play to win players, or pay to win players who are probably watching this, um, who want to be really competitive, top 100 type players, or are working towards it. I would recommend, and this is what I'm doing, mostly working on legendary five stars. That's why you're going to see that I have emblems here on Grave Maker. I'm starting to put them on Quintus. It's a shot. Ranveer, because I use Ranveer on Titans right now. I don't have Tarlac. Um, I'm putting them on Drake, Missandra. Uh, I am putting them on Guinevere because she's my tank. Elkanen, King Arthur. Um, and I th think that's it other than these couple of four stars down here. So you can see that I've really only chosen to put emblems on a few four stars. Um... And that's just because you want your heroes to be as strong as possible for war, uh, both on defense and when you're attacking. I hardly ever use any four-star heroes anymore for anything, uh, raids and wars and things like that, unless we get a tournament. So that's why I'm primarily putting them on five-star heroes. There are still a few four-star heroes I take into war, like Regard is really needed um, the reason I have emblems on that Sabina is because, uh, usually one attack per war, I need her. And there's really just not a lot of good sorcerers out there. And <laughs> that's also why I'm starting to put emblems on Quintus. Um, so yeah. Um, you know, with that, I, I recommend that, or I'd say it's advisable to make sure that all of your heroes, ideally on defense, have emblems, uh, what what's happening here is the emblems are really leveling the playing field. So while you might have a really awesome five star hero, if it clashes with another five star hero on defense because they're the same class talent, for example, this comes up a lot with Guinevere and Zaylene, then you might have to choose what you would think of as a lesser green hero uh, to put on defense because it has emblems. There's a point at which we're starting to get here when heroes have 8, 9, 10, 11 emblems, where mediocre or average heroes are starting to become better than non-emblemed A-plus 5-star heroes. Uh, so that's why you see that I have emblems on Elkanen. And not only that, but I've put Elkanen in the corner on my defense. Because I have Liana. But Sashat has my emblems over here. So an emblemed Elkanen is actually, I think, and I'm finding in my testing, harder to beat than a non-emblemed Liana sitting in the corner. And it's just going to become more so like that as well, because uh, as Elkanen gets emblems, his special just gets better and better. So some heroes you had before you stashed away and thought you would never level, might be the time just to make sure you can get them all in on defense. There are some heroes that I probably would never put emblems on or, or recommend, but uh, for the most part, you can really, uh, I, I think Small Giant Games did a great job creating this emblem idea so that 
uh, we can have a diverse range of options and heroes to choose from puzzle pieces to put together on defense and on offense. All right. Um, I want to point out uh, also that there is a really, um, probably the most difficult decision with emblems is choosing your wizard because there are a lot of good wizards. Uh, for example, you can see right here one of the heroes of the month recently, Anzo. Uh, he would be an okay hero to put emblems on if he were any other class, but he's a bad hero to put emblems on because he's a wizard. Uh, and he's a hero of the month. Um, but here, you know, we have Sartana. Uh, the, the wizard class talent goes really well with her, and that's because the talent... Uh, for wizards, um, I wonder if I can pull it up. Yeah, I can pull it up on my Guinevere because I have it on her. A plus 15% chance to deal 15 extra damage, plus 15% extra damage per each active buff the enemies have. The extra damage applies to both normal attacks and special skills. So, really, Sartana and the class talent goes together really well, but you can see that I've already had to make a hard choice and that was to put emblems on Guinevere even though that class talent really doesn't benefit Guinevere at all but I really need my tank to be strong so I've been putting emblems on Guinevere so that I can buff up her defense and her hit points and then that just makes her really strong and and hard to kill um so with that I just showed you one of the pathways I want to talk a little bit about some pathway theories uh, so, so when I'm talking about pathways, I'm talking about on the talent grid, you first select your level 1, and then your level 2, and your level 3, and your level 4, but there's multiple pathways. I chose right on Guinevere to give her a buff to defense and health, because I don't really care about her attack. So that's why I went right. Um, but sometimes you're going to have some difficult decisions to make down the road, uh, for example, do you go with uh, health or do you go with defense uh, and things like that? So the here's the three different theories. The first theory is to strengthen a hero's weaknesses. Let me give you a big example of this. If I pull up Quintus, what is his weakness? Do you see it? Well, other than being slow, he has a low defense. Uh, so that makes him very, very fragile. Not only does it take him a long time to go off, but it's very possible he's just going to die before he goes off. He is pretty powerful when he does go off. He can finish off an entire team. I've done that several times where I fire Cunchin first and then Quintus, and then basically their team is dead. But the defense is low. So one of the theories is to strengthen weaknesses, and that's to go in here and basically just choose the defense path every single time. And that would be just go down the left side and pick defense. Then when I get over here... I look for the side with defense, and I go there no matter what the other talent is. And then once I keep going, I look for defense, and I go over there no matter what the other talent is. So you see how that works? That is just strategically going through and strengthening a weakness so that the hero become, can become uh, uh, one that is typically more balanced. Another theory is to exploit strengths. So let me give you a good example of this. And that is with Guardian Jackal. Now, let me pick this one here that doesn't have as many emblems on it. Notice what Guardian Jackal's strength is. His attack is humongous for a four-star hero. It's 765. Um, but his defense and his health bonus are, are very low, or his hit points are very low. So, the exploit strengths theory says that you go into the talent grid and you continue to strengthen the thing that's already a strength, basically to make it such an overwhelming strength that you will just overwhelm an opponent. So I have not done that with Guardian Jackal here because I really care about his survivability. But if I were to follow that theory, I would just choose attack every time and keep going down the list and choosing attack so that uh, by by the end, I believe that Jackal would have like over 900, almost 1,000 uh, attack and, and that's just really really high and there are other heroes you can do that with too um, for example uh, let's pick the shot she's got a high attack and she's got a little bit less than average defense for a five-star hero now I have nine emblems on her so I've been pumping that defense up a, a little bit but if I were to follow that strategy again I would mainly be going and choosing attack attack that way 
and then attack this way and just ignoring whichever side doesn't have attack. All right, and then lastly, and this is kind of where my personal preference is, uh, the last theory is to choose balance, and that is to work on both the hero's strengths and to work on the hero's weaknesses, and there's a specific way that I do that. This is my personal choice. I favor defense pretty much all the time because I think defense is the most important stat in the game. Um, I'm going to open up Gravemaker to show you because I have noticed that when you have a hero like uh, Gravemaker who has like a medium defense um, and regular hit points, he lives a lot longer than a hero like Quintus who has potentially, if I had the same amount of emblems on here, more hit points or health than defense. So defense is just really, really important. And when you go through the talent grid and you click on defense, you can see that you, you get another 18 points out of it, whereas for attack, you only get 15 points out of it. So you can increase defense faster than you can increase attack. And the health bonus may seem like a lot, uh, 36 points, which is like double what the defense is. But really, 36 points is not a lot at all. Uh, and any given hero in this game can just absolutely overrun that 36 points pretty easily. So I don't think that the health bonus is really all that important. There is a time and a place for it, but I focus mainly on defense and I do balance. And here's how I do the balance. So if I have an attacking hero that I use a lot on offense, or I have an aggressive hero that's on defense, Gravemaker's on my defense, then what I generally tend to do is choose defense first and then if i have to make a tough choice i choose attack second with an attacking hero and if it's not an attacking hero the one that doesn't deal very much damage like for guinevere i choose defense first and then health second because i care more about keeping her alive so you can see what i'm doing with guinevere here is i chose defense first health second when i get that choice again health defense Defense, health. Uh, and then as we go down, of course, I'm going to choose defense. And then uh, we get health, defense, health, defense. We can pretty much go the whole way with Guinevere and do that. Uh, with Gravemaker, this is, I'm definitely taking a, a balanced approach with him. Uh, I chose, because he's on my defense, I chose health, defense first. See, this was a tough choice because I could have chosen attack and health. But remember, I said I prioritized defense. So I went after the defense on the right side. Um, when I get down to this section, either way I go, I'm going to get defense. But like I said, my secondary focus is attack with an aggressive hero like Gravemaker. So I chose the attack defense side. And then as I go down here, this is just a really easy choice. Attack defense. Those are the two that I want. Ideally, if I can get attack defense on an aggressive hero, I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'll show you one more hero where uh, I'm trying to do that. Uh, so that would be, let's say, um, King Arthur. So we've got defense. I chose because I favor that one, attack. Now, over here, I favored uh, the attack a little bit more. So there are some exceptions to this. Uh, because I really like King Arthur as a sniper sometimes, especially in war. Uh, so I wanted to increase his attack to be able to, to get that off and potentially kill an opposing hero. Um, over here, uh, I chose health and defense. So you can see I'm still favoring defense. When I go down here, I'm probably going to favor defense. Uh, there's a lot more difficult choices with Paladin. Um, and so for, for this one, this is a really good example of how I'm probably going to balance things out. Uh, so sometimes when I go down here, I might choose the defense side or I might choose the attack side and it just really depends. But let me show you how you can help make that decision is look for what's at the end. Uh, there's defense bonus at the end. That's going to be huge. Right now it's 29 points, but that's going to affect my decision making. So from, from here on out, I'm probably going to choose defense, 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 so that when I get up here, it just gives me a humongous uh, defense. Now... Uh, part of the reason that I started off uh, here 
going to health and attack rather than defense and health, even though I said I favored defense, is because we had a health bonus pretty early on. So that helped me take advantage of that and increase King Arthur's attack. All right, so I've talked a little bit about how I make decisions with emblems, uh, the three different theories. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about um, reset tokens versus spending gems to reset. Because unlike when you max a hero, like let's say you max a five-star hero and then you regret it uh, regularly, it's just an unemblemed five-star hero and you're like, oh, I hate that five-star hero, I never use it. Um, why did I do that? Unfortunately, you can't get the resources back. There's no food coming back. There's no ascension materials coming back. But if you level a five-star hero with emblems, you can go in here and reset it. If you have one of those red reset tokens, you can use that to reset it for free. I happen to not have any right now. Uh, you don't lose any emblems if you do that. But if you uh, use gems, then what will happen is you're going to lose 5% of your emblems. So you have to be really careful about resetting these emblems. You have to make good decisions about which heroes you're going to start putting emblems on to start with so that you don't have to keep changing them around. So if you take my advice that I said earlier and line up a defense where you can get emblems on every single hero, then you're not going to get to a point where you have like three or four emblemed heroes on defense and then you realize that even though those two other heroes on your defense are pretty good, they're just not cutting it. Now you have to switch emblems around and waste some resources doing that. It's going to be a lot easier. So plan out who you should be putting emblems on. Another thing is I don't recommend splitting emblems between heroes on defense, although some people do that. Uh, but that's just another thing you're going to find that at some point all the five-star heroes tend to when they get up to a level 20, you're, you're going to have a couple that are stuck around level 9, 10, 11, uh, and they just won't match up quite as well. So try to get everybody on defense to have emblems. All right. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, there was a lot of information. I'm sure this will cause some questions to happen. You may certainly uh, post in the comments. Uh, I, I will try to answer them, but there are plenty of other people who would try to answer them as well. Uh, and thank you for watching.